Namaste. So now we're continuing our series on Bhakti Bhava, leading up to the understanding of Mahabhava, which is the highest form of love of God. And this gives all benedictions, all blessings, all knowledge, all realizations, including moksha. In fact, moksha comes to the bhakta without effort and without trouble. This is a great secret. And after we present the whole structure of the bhavas, then we'll talk about bhava in general, how it develops, and how it delivers even moksha, the highest of the four purusharthas. So today let's talk about sattvika bhava. When the heart becomes overwhelmed by rati or bhava in relation to one's ishtadevata, either directly or indirectly, the learned call this sattva. Now, sattva also means goodness, but that's material goodness. In this sense, sattva means the heart is full to overflowing. And what's the difference between anubhava and sattvika bhava? In anubhava, the transformations or bodily symptoms are still somewhat under control. In other words, by an effort of will, one can suppress them or uh, direct them. But not so with sattvika bhava. Sattvika bhava is so overwhelming that the, the tiny human will is completely uh, devastated, <laughs> overwhelmed uh, in a flood of ecstatic emotion. The transformations that arise solely from this sattva are called sattvika bhavas. There are three types of sattvika bhavas. Snigdha, affectionate arising from genuine rati. Digda, tainted arising from other emotions. And ruksha, contaminated, arising in a person without rati. So we're really only interested in snigdha sattvika bhava, that transcendental emotion which arises from pure devotion. We're not really interested in uh, emotions that arise from other causes. Uh, for example, we often see in movies or dramas examples of someone who is overwhelmed by some calamity or uh, something happening uh, that drives their emotions over the top. But this is not sattvika bhava. Sattvika bhava's cause is completely internal, and it's related to the ishtadevata. It is not something derived from sense experience. Rather, it derives from pure consciousness. This, of course, is an example of turiya, for those who are thinking. <laughs> analyzing uh, consciousness of consciousness and the particular flavors of consciousness in the five ratis, direct uh, ratis, and the seven indirect ratis. Snigdha sattvika bhava has two divisions, principal and secondary. The principal sattvika bhavas arise from a principal rati, the wise call this relationship direct. The five principal ratis are neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love, or erotic love. And these are in order of the perceived sweetness. And madhurya, of course, madhu means honey. So madhurya rati is the sweetest. Sattvika bhavas that arise from a secondary rati are called secondary snigdha sattvika bhavas. Uh, 
The relationship with the Ishta Devata is somewhat indirect. So let me give a couple of examples uh, just to make this clear. From the scriptures, Radha, whose teeth were whiter than the Kunda flower, while making an excellent garland of Kunda flowers for Mukunda, heard the sweet song of the flute, and she became stunned. So this is one of the Sattvika Bhavas, which is related to a direct rati, in this case Madhurya rati. Another example, when Krishna, the rain cloud for the chataka bird of her eyes, was brought to Mathura, Yashoda, turning red-faced in anger, began to scold Nanda Maharaj in a choked voice. So in this example, the sattvika bhava of changing color and uh, speaking harsh words are derived from a secondary rati of anger, that uh, why did you let Krishna go to Matra? Now everything in Vrindavan is ruined. So this is the difference between primary and secondary sattvika bhavas. When the heart of a person who possesses genuine rati is overcome by an emotion other than the primary or secondary rati, and if this emotion appears along with a genuine rati, this is called digda sattvika rati. It's not pure. It's not uh, simply an expression of an internal emotion, but there's some external stimulus also. And sometimes there are apparent sattvika bhavas similar to those of persons possessing rati appearing in persons without real rati through astonishment or bliss caused by hearing about the sweet and astonishing Lord. This is called ruksha sattvika bhava. Sometimes we see that people at a festival or at a class or uh, as a guest in a temple are suddenly overwhelmed by these ecstatic emotions simply by association. But because they don't have any genuine rati with the Lord, they are simply imitative uh, or stimulated by external factors. <clears throat> and this is contaminated rati. The eight sattvika bhavas are paralysis, perspiration, hairs standing on end, choking of the voice, trembling, changing color, tears, and fainting. Now these bodily changes are externally, uh, they look like some kind of suffering, but internally they're experienced as the highest bliss. And how does this work? Well, when one's consciousness comes in contact with the Supreme in any form, it could be a god or a goddess, or an incarnation, avatar, or uh, any of the great devotees of the Lord, uh, can be the udipan, the stimulus for this sattvika bhava. Then the prana, the internal airs, become uh, full of transcendental energy. And when they contact the different elements, then these different symptoms arise. When the prana takes shelter of earth, paralysis arises. When the prana takes shelter of water, tears arise. When the prana takes shelter of the fire element, perspiration and change of color arise. When the prana takes shelter of akash, the space element, fainting arises. When the prana takes shelter of itself, to a small degree, the hairs stand on end. When the prana takes shelter of itself to a moderate degree, the body shakes. 
when the prana takes shelter of itself to the extreme, the voice chokes up. Because of this, the sattvika bhavas produce extreme disturbance both internally and externally. The wise call the disturbance to the body the anubhava aspect of sattvika bhava, and the disturbance to the heart the vyabhichari aspect of the sattvika bhava. We already went through anubhavas, and in the next episode we're going to go through vyabhichari bhavas. But in any case, this uh, so-called disturbance is actually very blissful, and <laughs> it can't really be described because it's completely internal. So when we experience these things, it's always astonishing because we can't see what is the connection between the stimulus and the response. The stimulus may be something very small, uh, like simply, um, for example, some devotees, when they saw Krishna's footprints, they got completely stunned and fell on the ground. This is because their prana is coming in, in touch with the earth element, and this produces a symptom of being stunned. So these different symptoms arise whenever there is overwhelming ecstatic love coming from within. And there are different grades of this type of bhava. The sattvika bhavas are of four types when they attain increasing degrees of intensity. Dhumaita, smoky. Jwalita, luminous. Deepta, brilliant. And Uddeepta, very brilliant. All the sattvika bhavas in the ruksha state, in persons without real rati, remain generally at the dhumaita level. The sattvika bhavas in the snigdha state appear in all four levels, dhumaita, smoky, jwalita, luminous, dipta, brilliant, and uddipta, very brilliant. Generally, this is related to the number of sattvika bhavas present at a particular time. When all of the sattvika bhavas are present simultaneously, this is mahabhava. And this is the exclusive property of the pure devotees and consorts of the Lord, like Radharani and her followers. And there are many others, so many examples in the scriptures. You should look into the scriptures, and when you read them, especially the Puranic stories, uh, you can get an idea of these different expressions of ecstatic love. But even better than that, you should perform your own devotional service and experience these things directly within your own self. And this is what leads to complete abandonment of material desires and attainment of the highest ecstasy, including liberation. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.